Fritz Lang led a fascinating life. At the onset of World War I, he enlisted for military service in the Austrian army and fought in Russia and Romania. He was wounded three times and later suffered from shell shock or post-traumatic stress syndrome. Lang later lived in Germany where his conflicts with the Nazi party became legendary. When the Nazis began working on war rockets, they decided what was seen in Lang's film Woman in the Moon was too close to the truth. To preserve what they considered national security, they had the models destroyed and the film withdrawn from release. Adolf Hitler and Joseph Goebbels were big fans of Metropolis. Goebbels even told Lang that he could be made an honorary Aryan despite his Jewish background. Goebbels allegedly told him, Mr. Lang, we decide who is Jewish and who is not. Hitler even offered Lang amnesty, but the director fled the country anyway. With the movie M, he popularized the film noir genre. Everything that came later, Double Indemnity, The Maltese Falcon, Sunset Boulevard, The Lady from Shanghai, owes at least a little bit to Fritz Lang's contributions of fear and paranoia. Naturally, this made him a big influence on the likes of Alfred Hitchcock and Orson Welles. With Metropolis, he revolutionized science fiction films. In a sense, two genres would be quite different if Fritz Lang had never left his fingerprints on them. His talents changed the entire art form, reinventing ways of telling stories. In addition to all this, Lang was known as an eccentric on the set, as many directors often are. Some of what he did was considered dangerous or frightening. Although widely respected by critics and audiences, for actors, he was one of the most disliked directors in both America and Germany. Spencer Tracy once had to take control of the set just to get the hungry cast and crew some lunch. He once yelled at Marilyn Monroe for daring to have her acting coach on the set because he felt the coach might upstage him. Of course, there are far more maddening examples. Here are eight. Number eight, attacking the Nazis in Manhunt. Obviously, this is less insane and more brazen for early 1941. This is an anti-Nazi film made during a time in which America was not at war with the Nazis and feared taking sides in World War II due to the prevailing policy of isolationism. Joseph Breen of the Hayes office called it a hate film. Daryl F. Zanuck was also worried about the message of the film and banned Lang from the editing room, but Lang and his associate secretly edited the film without Zanuck knowing. Number 7. 500 Malnourished Poor Children in Metropolis for the scene where the workers' city was flooded, Lang found 500 poor children to work for 14 days in a pool of water that he purposefully kept at a low temperature. The economy was so bad at the time that finding hundreds of starving children desperate for work was simple. Number 6. Alleged Affairs with His Cast and Crew Robert Osborne, a film historian and host on Turner Classic Movies, believes that Lang had an affair with Gerda Morris on the set of Spies, complicating the production. He also began seeing his screenwriting partner, Thea Van Harbo, while still married to his wife, Lisa Rosenthal. His wife committed suicide by shooting herself in the chest. Speculation is she did so while catching Lang with Van Harbo. After marrying his new love interest, most believe he began pursuing younger women behind her back. They divorced because of this. Number 5. Daring to Make M The infamous film M, for all its controversy at the time, was nearly not made at all. The Nazi party took offense to the tentative title of the film, Murderer Among Us, assuming it was about the Fuhrer. They eventually relented. Further, when Lang announced his film was about a child murderer, some of the population rallied against him and sent him death threats. Number 4. Pubic Hair Lang wanted an actress to be completely nude in a film. Bear in mind, this was 1922. Much to Lang's dismay, he disapproved of how the woman's pubic hair looked and ordered her to shave it off. The actress refused. The compromise was placing a piece of cloth over the hair. Fritz Lang had contentious and controversial relationships with women. Number 3. Lang's Relationship with Murderers As research for the film M, Lang spent eight days inside a mental institution in Germany. While there, he met several child murderers and spoke to them about their crimes and why they did what they did. This included Peter Kurten, the alleged inspiration for the killer in M. Although, Lang always denied he was the model for the murderer. In addition to this, he also used several real criminals as extras in the film. Number 2. Cast Endangerment During filming, Lang used live weapons and explosives that put the cast and crew at risk. 
In one film, for scenes involving guns, real guns were used instead of props or blanks. In one scene, a stunt actor had to use the gun. Cinematographer Fritz Arno Wagner once said that he spent most of the production in a state of panic because of the way Lang would endanger his crew. Also, Lang used real explosives for a film while the crew was nearby. Wagner filmed the explosion scenes at the factory on location, and rather than have a technical expert perform the entire operation, Lang himself actually triggered the explosion. Number 1. Brigitte Helms' Injuries The famous android suit, easily the most memorable image to come out of Metropolis, was actually extremely uncomfortable to wear. It wasn't so much unpleasant as it was dangerous. It cut and bruised her often. Fritz Lang, perhaps not wanting a stunt double to ruin the authenticity of his film, made her wear it as it gouged and scraped her. What's more, Helm is genuinely pulled by her hair in the film, and when she is clamped in wood, she didn't get enough air because the shot took too long. Not to mention she caught on fire during the burning scene. In the latter years of his life, Lang traveled back to Germany where he made three more films. As he neared death, he was almost completely blind. Lang died in 1976, leaving behind a legacy as a director who was difficult to work with, but mostly as someone who changed the art of film for the better. Zeiger ging vorwärts und Goebbels redete und ich schielte auf die Uhr und plötzlich war es zu spät, auf die Bank zu gehen, um mein Geld abzuholen. Nun, dann wurde ich verabschiedet. Ich sagte dem Minister, wie sehr ich mich geehrt fühlte, nahm mir ein Auto. Ich war nass am ganzen Körper vor Angst. Fuhr nach Hause, sagte mein Diener, soll mir einen Koffer packen, ich möchte so auf eine Woche, zwei nach Paris. Was am selben Abend verließ ich Deutschland und kam nie wieder.